A Florida man named Curtis Wade Holly fatally shot a sheriff's deputy on Sunday after he set his house on fire. It was part of this detailed plot to ambush officers and first responders. So what he did is he lit his house on fire, he waited until his house was fully engulfed in flames, and then he asked his neighbor to call for help. And then he basically hid in the bushes, and when first responders showed up, he fired on them. Deputy Chris Smith was killed. This guy was a married man, and he's a father of two. This is an absolutely heartbreaking story. Now, here's the kicker. WNYT and Raw Story report, quote, A man who set his house on fire and ambushed responding police officers held anti-government views and had previously threatened law enforcement. Now, as of today and as of right now, the cops are not going into detail uh, about exactly what his anti-government views are and if he's a part of any particular group, say sovereign citizens or some particular patriot militia group. But either way, based on the information that we have right now, according to multiple reports, this does appear to be terrorism. Now, turn on CNN, even turn on MSNBC, turn on Fox News, <laughs> that's a good one, turn on the nightly news, tell me if any of them cover this in any serious way. I mean, maybe you'll get a short, little, 30-second, minute-long report or something like that, but you're not going to get any serious, in-depth coverage, and you certainly aren't going to get the same kind of coverage that you would get if, say, for example, the exact same thing happened, but a guy named Muhammad Abdullah pulled it off. See, this is one of the things that gets under my skin so much, and it drives me crazy, is that we don't have the same reaction to different kinds of deaths and different types of terrorism, even though we should. If you look in the news, you would think that Ebola and ISIS have killed thousands of the American people, when the reality is Ebola killed one, two Americans, thereabouts, and ISIS killed in America, how many? Zero? But they make it seem like, oh my god, ISIS just invaded Wyoming, and they're carrying an Ebola bomb. That's what they make it seem like, because that's what they focus on. And of course, what they're doing is, it's sensationalism to try to up their ratings, because they get more eyeballs the more that their hair is on fire. But when you look at the numbers, what's the real threat? I'll tell you what the real threat is. In the U.S., it's gun violence, uh, violence and abuse of authority from the police, and right-wing terrorism. These are things that you should be way more fearful of. And again, I want to be clear, this isn't just my opinion. I'm not saying, hey, it's my opinion you should care more about these things. I'm saying that it is an empirical reality if you look at the data that these things are more likely to hurt you and kill you and be ne have a negative effect on your life. By far, by far, 32,000 people die every year in the U.S. from gun violence. And that includes everything, whether it's homicides, suicides, accidental shootings, you name it. 32,000. 32,000. If ISIS killed 32,000 Americans in America, we would repeal the Constitution by, I don't know, 8 o'clock tonight. If Ebola killed that many, nobody would ever leave their house. Everybody would, you know shut everything down, we'd all wear our fucking hazmat suits out there, but since it's guns and we're used to it and the media doesn't cover it, it's like, <laughs> oh, the gun background check bill failed? That's a shame. What's for dinner? <laughs> it's stunning, man. It's stunning the how misguided the American people are and how they don't give a shit about actual numbers. 56% of the terrorist attacks in America, 56%. Post 9-11. Actually, not even. Before then, too. From the 1990s until 2009, according to a Department of Homeland Security study, they're right-wing terrorist attacks. The majority of terrorist attacks in America are right-wing terrorist attacks. And we are one of the few outlets that actually covers these things and gives a shit about them. Whether it's a KKK situation or a neo-Nazi 
uh, attack or a sovereign citizens one or a patriot militia one or an abortion clinic bombing. When you look at all these things in their totality, they're a bigger problem, but they just don't get covered so you don't know about it. And when they do get covered, they're only covered as if they're a shooting, as if it's some, you know, some sort of just depressed teenage white kid doing it when oftentimes it's in the name of a political ideology so that's terrorism that's the definition of terrorism the guy who went into a jewish center recently and started shooting people and killed people the media covered it like it's just a like it's a shooting but it's not it's terrorism why do you not call it terrorism when it's white people it's never terrorism when it's white people have you noticed that the default is always it must not be terrorism because they're white no white people can do terrorism too the default, if they have darker skin, if they're Muslim, the, the default is it's got to be terrorism. If they have white skin, even if they're telling you, I'm a neo-Nazi, I'm a KKK operative, uh, you know, I'm part of this sovereign citizens group. Even if they tell you that, the media goes, ha ha, that's nice. Anyway, shooting happened today. So you don't get the proper context, you don't get the proper perspective, and the media has failed terribly in covering these things in the way that they should cover these things.